Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal with the Bible News Prophecy Channel. And today I want to talk to you about something Bible students have long wondered about. And that is, where does the beast of Revelation 13, 1 through 10 come from? Now, we in the Church of God have long taught that the last resurrection of the Roman Empire will take place in Europe. That this empire's leader is represented as a beast, or the leader himself is called the beast throughout the books of Revelation and related to the same ones in Daniel. And the question is, can you prove from your Bible that the beast comes from Europe or the beast is European? Well, my friends, that's what we're going to do right now. So if you have one available, take your Bible and turn with me, if you will, to Revelation chapter 13. This is the last book of, of your Bible. Starting in uh, chapter 1, excuse me, verse 1 of chapter 13, it says, And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his ten horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. So right now we're seeing this is not a good person. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a dragon. About the lion, excuse me. And the dragon gave him his power. Now the dragon, in this case, is Satan, the devil. His throne and his great authority. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So this is something that is going to just people are going to be astonished by. So they worshipped the dragon, which gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him? And he was given the mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given great authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. This is not good. And authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Verse 8, And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, Almost all, because it says in verse 8, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Yes, my friends, true Christians, those who are following Jesus Christ as they should, those who are truly converted, whose names are written in the book of life, they won't follow them. Verse 9, and whoever one has an ear, let him hear. Verse 10, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. So this is going to be a very difficult time, not only for Christians, but for others as well. But going back to the first verse in Revelation 13, it says, Then I saw on the sand of the sea, I saw a beast rising up from the sea. So this beast has something to do with the sea. Which sea? Well, from the book of Revelation, just reading that, you can't tell in that one spot. It doesn't say. However, if you try to connect the dots in the Bible, you can, you can get a clue. If you turn back to the book of Daniel, uh, one of the prophets of the Old Testament, and you go to Daniel uh, chapter 7, he describes a beast that sounds an awful lot like the one that John described in Revelation chapter uh, uh, 13. And it says, verse 2, Daniel spoke, saying, this is Daniel 7, verse 2, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Aha, so there's something called the great sea. And four beasts came from each other, from the sea, each different from the other. First was like a lion, had eagle's wings. And I watched the wings were plucked off, and it was lifted from the earth, and it made stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Verse 5, then I saw another beast. Second, like a bear, it was raised up on one side, had three ribs and its mouth between its teeth, and they said to it thus, Arise and devour much less. Verse 6, Then I looked, and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings like a bird, and the beast was given four heads, and dominion was given to it. And after this, verse 7, In the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge teeth, it was devouring, breaking in pieces, trampling with residues of its feet. It was different from all the beasts, and it had ten horns. 
Now what's interesting about this beast and all the other beasts is you'll notice in verse 2 it talks about the great sea. In verse 3 it says that's where they, all four of these beasts came from. So this is the last beast. The one in Revelation 13, 1 through 10 is talking about the last beast. He rises from the sea, the great sea. Well, what's the great sea? That's an interesting question. You could speculate, or we could turn to the book of Joshua. I will notice in Joshua chapter 9, verse 1, it says, and It came to pass, when all the kings who were on this side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowland, in all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, and the Hittite and Amorite, and the, the Pezzarite and the Hevite, and the Jebusite, all heard about it. So we find that during the time of the children of Israel, there was a great sea. As it turns out, here's a map of the Roman Empire, 117, and this is where Lebanon would be, and right here we have Israel. Well, the only great sea anywhere near Israel, at least a great sea, is the Mediterranean Sea. Now, there are other references or passages that we're not going to turn to, but if you want, if you want to look, read Joshua uh, chapter 23, verse 4, or Ezekiel 47, 13 through 16, it also tells you about the Great Sea, and you can tell it's the sea that borders Israel here. So, we see this Great Sea. Well, one of the reasons I pulled this map out, and you want, want to look at this map, is that this region here, the region around the white region, was the old Roman Empire. The Roman Empire covered the entire Mediterranean Sea. Now you might say, okay, fine. Well, right now we have Europe on the north and we have Islamic countries on the south, so it could be either. Well, that's one way to look at it. However, if we go back to the book of Daniel, this time, however, we're going to go to the book of Daniel chapter 11. And we learned something very interesting happens in Daniel chapter 11. In Daniel chapter 11, they're talking about a couple of different leaders. And one of these particular leaders, Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, is called the king of the north. And we're going to learn about him for just a moment. Something happens. Verse 40, Daniel chapter 11. At that time of the end, so it's end time prophecy, obviously, the king of the south shall attack him. Who's the him? We'll find out right here. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, horsemen, and many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. He will also enter the glorious land, so he's going in the land of uh, ancient Israel, and many countries will be overthrown. He shall stretch, verse 42, he's going to stretch out his hands against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. So we've got a king who comes from the north, and this king from the north is going to take over his lands in the south. Only possible place is from Europe. Now, some have suggested that Russia could be the, this beast. Russia doesn't border the Mediterranean Sea. In the end time prophecies, the power that's going to control the Mediterranean Sea is going to be Europe. Now, there's one other place to take a look at. If you take, turn to your Bibles, we'll go back to the book of Revelation, but instead of going to Revelation chapter 13, we're going to go a couple of chapters by. We're just going to read a few passages here in, verse, in chapter 17. In verse 3, I'm cutting the middle of this, and I, that's the Apostle John, saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, we're going to go down to uh, verse 9. It says, Here is wisdom. Here's the mind which is wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the, the woman sits. According to Protestant scholars, Catholic scholars, Eastern Orthodox scholars, and Church of God scholars, what this is referring to is the city of Rome. Now you say, how do we know it's the city? Well, if you go to verse 18 of Revelation 17, it says, And the woman whom you saw is the great city, which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now we already saw that this woman, in verse 13, sits on a beast. So there's an arrangement between the beast, for a while at least, and this woman. And it's a great city. Throughout history, one of the greatest European cities has always been Rome. Now, other than Amman, Jordan, and Constantinople, 
Uh, Rome is one of the few great cities on seven hills in the world. The, the fact that biblical scholars have, uh, and Catholic scholars and other scholars have pointed this out to be Rome, should be clear proof that this beast that the woman rides is also European. Now, if you go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 7, read one more passage or a couple passages that will give us a clue here. And it says in the book of Daniel chapter 9, verses 26 and 27, I'm going to cut in the middle of this, it says, And the prince of the people who is to come shall destroy the city and sanctuary. Okay, the, the, the people who destroyed the city, that was Jerusalem, the people who destroyed that, those were Roman people. Okay, those are people part of the Roman Empire. So the prince is going to come at the end, comes from the Roman Empire. Furthermore, in verse 27, it says he's going to confirm a covenant with many for a week. And in the middle of the week, he's going to bring the end to the sacrifice and offering. Well, if you go to Daniel chapter 11 and go into verse 31, you see that this prince will later become a king and, quote, forces will be mustered by him and he will, they shall defile the sanctuary fortresses and they shall take away the daily sacrifice and place there the abomination of desolation. Okay, so we've now connected the person who confirms the covenant with Europe, the fact that he is the king of the north to Europe, the fact that this beast rises from the sea is the, uh, to Europe, that the sea is the Mediterranean Sea is Europe. With those basic points, you can prove from the Bible that the beast of Revelation 13, 1 through 10 is European. Now, I don't want to close completely on that note. If you take your Bible and you'll turn to Revelation chapter 19, I want to read a couple of passages here. And it says, And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So this time we're starting to talk about Jesus here. But what happens? Verse 19, we'll skip down there. And I saw the beast, same beast we're talking about. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat at on the horse and against his army. So the beast is actually going to try to fight Jesus Christ. But verse 20, the beast was captured and with him the false prophets, prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and who worshiped the image of the beast. These two were cast alive in the lake burning with fire and brimstone. So we see that all the, though this beast is European and this beast is powerful, Jesus Christ will return, his forces will prevail, the beast and the false prophet will be destroyed when the kingdom of God comes. And as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, pray thy kingdom come. Until then, turn to God, love Jesus as you would have others, love as Jesus would have you love. And stay tuned and try to see us for the next episode of Bible News and Prophecy.